yeah, as you said, not E4, E5. Um, okay, E4, go. but yeah, exactly, C5 is much more logical. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and people are applauding, actually, right next to us. Uh, people are applauding for finally seeing a Sicilian. I mean, well, Sicilian I is so, it's just much more popular uh, among many, many players. Well, and it's not only that. I mean, Berlin is a boring kind of game, and of course, sharp lines you can get out of the Sicilian mostly, and actually he played five, F3. Yeah, Magnus grabs the very first opportunity, I would say, to make the game uh, more quiet and less theoretical and exactly uh, what he likes. But actually I'm kind of surprised that he played F3 and he didn't continue with knight C3. Probably the reason, the only reason is to surprise already here Kar uh, Karyakin. Yes. E5, knight B3. Well, it's going to be very difficult to create something. White's plan is to play c4, and that's how he wants to play a very slow, but very stable, little better for white, very unpleasant with black, incredibly difficult to create anything uh, for black. But of course, Sergei just has to play and try his best and make interesting ideas, so try to unbalance uh, Magnus and that he will be nervous and his hand will be shaking and something will go wrong and Magnus makes a mistake because without Magnus's help, I mean, the match is over. Bishop e7. C4, C4. main move in the position. Well, I mean, Karyakin, of course, came back in the, uh, to business after 2-0, what we were ju just talking about in the World Cup in 2015. But you can't get back all the time in such a difficult situations, almost impossible situations. Black played a5, it's all theory. Yes. Bishop e3, a4, white will come back knight to d2, or actually he went to c1. I mean, what is interesting in this uh, playoff, that it's very clear that, first of all, it's Magnus who was dominating, in the match, but also not only in chess-wise, but time. Mm -hmm. Time was so much better the way uh, Magnus was uh, taking care of his time. I mean, Karyakin was really thinking a lot in situations where not necessarily it was needed, but it was definitely, it was just from the beginning, he always had like a five, 10 minutes being behind. Yeah, there are still 10 games of this position in the database. The most recent uh, top or yeah grandmaster level game was uh, between Kokarev and Oparin in the uh, Russian, Russian Championship uh, last October, and um, that game ended in a draw. It remained fairly equal, and this, of course, is exactly what uh, what Magnus is trying to get a position where it's just very hard for Black to create winning chances. Yeah, but actually it's, it is difficult uh, in any position against Magnus to create winning chances. But if he can get a reasonable middle game, then uh, of course uh, Magnus's hand can also be shaking and not necessarily be able to really focus. I mean, he's so close to stay the world champion. He castles where queen a5 was another uh, possibility. Queen yeah, but a5 then queen d2 is in, possible. Uh, in that game. Yes. And he wants to avoid the exchange of queens. So why develop knight c3? I mean, eventually, some. I mean, black will play bishop e6, develop his knight. Eventually, I think probably some knight h5 will be the move. Actually, maybe even now it can be uh, interesting try to play knight h5 and somehow to make things a bit of chaotic, or he just just uh, develop his pieces, like bishop e6. But listening to uh, Karyakin's manager, it almost was like it was lost already. Do you think Karyakin has the same thoughts going in, around in his mind now? If he has the same thoughts, he has zero chance. He cannot have. He has to believe that he can uh, switch things. He has to believe that it is possible. And he has to think about the only thing, how he can create chances for himself. He can't go down. It's after this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if things he cannot change.
Queen A5 now. So what now then? What does this position tell us? Well, White can go Queen D2, which is a which is a very sensible move, and then later on probably White would be going for Knight D5, exchanging the knights, exchanging the. I mean, after Queen D2, Knight D5 is something White can uh, go into a drawish uh, kind of endgame. Uh, but also queen d2 is not the only move. I mean, why can we be playing uh, simply bishop e2 and castle? But probably after this, uh, later on, black's idea would be at some point to go bishop d8, bishop b6. And also h a3 is, is a move. Actually, probably now he would be going a3. Uh, so queen, I would go queen, queen d2. Uh, has been exclusively played in the, in the games uh, so far with this position, except for for one game where the players actually agreed in this uh, draw in this position but uh, well, which that's will be not, not the case like here happen. exactly yeah yeah but all in, in all other games white went uh, queen d2 here seven seven previous games yeah i mean after queen d2 of course uh, knight c6 is a is a completely sensible move and if let's say of course it's a question whether what uh, magnus will choose as a strategy whether should he go try to exchange pieces as much as possible, because that's also not necessarily the best idea. Because actually, black could be taking on d5, and if cd knight b4, for example, now black would be threatening knight c2, so white has no time to develop. So this is something uh, black could be creating some opportunities. And also a3 is something which uh, white really have to look after. So, White played it's Queen D2. Queen two, yeah, yeah. And I'm curious if Sergei will be playing flashing out Knight C6 or he has something else in mind. Actually, I've Black is a very normal game. Yes, I have five games with uh, bishop, e bishop E6, one with Knight C6 and one with Knight A6. Yeah, Bishop E6 is always possible, but I think after Bishop E6, uh, he will be playing Knight D5. So, the reason... Because of that, I would prefer to go knight c6 to keep uh, the option to play knight b4. But of course, Sergei has to be careful not to give all these drawish uh, opportunities for white, because then it's almost impossible to create chances. But it's extremely difficult. I mean, uh, Sergei has a repertoire of being very stable, not allowing weaknesses, but his repertoire is not about creating chances with both colors mm -hmm. and playing sharp and avoiding draw. Yeah, he's out of his comfort zone, to put it mildly. Yeah. So, I mean, probably it's the most difficult. He's one of the players for whom it's the most difficult to play for a win. Because after playing 12 games in regulation, his style, three games in tiebreak, his style, how hard or how easy is it to suddenly convert into a new style of playing after so many games? Well, and well, in other hand, it's not so difficult because he understands that he he doesn't have so much of a chance to turn around the match anymore, but still he has to create something. So, of course, the, the main thing is whether he can make himself believe that it is possible for him to do something miracle with the black pieces. This is number one, two, and three. And only after that, he has to think that what actually he is really making moves on the board. And now he's been thinking for um, almost uh, two and a half minutes. Well, this is uh, simply the scenario of every game. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, he goes down with time. And what do you think will be his, uh, his next move here? And when will we see the, atta the attacking moves, if they will come? Well, he cannot force matters because there is a spirit of a position. So he cannot uh, just bring any, something out of the sky, like playing a crazy move and make a surprise. So he has to be developing his pieces. That's very clear that he has to play uh, with bishop move or knight move, possibly uh, taking an account to play a3 to weaken the, the A, A5, E1 diagonal after A3 possibly. But for sure now he's thinking about how to avoid 
exchanging pieces and uh, really how is it possible to create any kind of serious idea which shows that it's going to be a serious middle game with serious chances. Yeah, it looks quite likely actually that we'll uh, get an end game. I mean, after a 95 at the right moment, uh, or maybe... Well, probably Black, Black should be avoiding die. that. So with Knight C6 for the moment, maybe... No, I'm not saying that Black loses even more or uh, chances to win this game in an end game, but... I would, yeah, most players would like to keep the queens on the board a bit longer, I would say, in this situation. Well, Knight C6, Knight D5, let's say. And then uh, if Knight D5, what happens if, let's say, White be taking on A5? Knight takes A5, C takes D5. It's black has probably a nice position, something like bishop d7. and uh, But whether white can be better or no, that's a completely other story. It is more pleasant for black. But, uh, well, we'll see after knight c6 what uh, Magnus has in mind to play after uh, knight c6, I think. Karyakin is again in the thinking position. The Karyakin pose. He is in deep thought. <laughs> Almost thinking for five minutes. Yeah, definitely looking maybe some unexpected idea, which is not very easy to figure out. And and he knows that knight d5 is coming, uh, possibly. He there played knight a6. Interesting way of dealing with things. I'm curious what he has in mind after knight uh, d5. And when you're curious about that, Judith, it is a pleasure welcoming uh, Maurice Astley to the studio. What's your thoughts on this? <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. They've been going toe to toe all this time. Uh, it's been gladiator chess, but also it's been a little bit boring. But the Rapids have really been much more entertaining. But seeing Magnus make these mistakes is a bit surprising. Yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. I think Magnus should have won you know, game two for sure, I mean, without question. Now we're seeing game, he won in game three, very enterprising sacrifice. I think it's going to be hard for Sergei to make a comeback in this game. It's very solid position, no weaknesses anywhere. It looks, looks like a big challenge. What's your thoughts on Magnus Carlsen having winning positions on three occasions without managing to capitalize on it's it? It's stunning. I mean, it's just stunning. It's Magnus Carlsen, number one player in the world. He should be closing these deals. Something seems like it's been up this whole match, and you just feel like it's just not been in his fingertips. But give credit to Sergey. He has been a true fighter. His defensive skills, nobody would have expected. And uh, we're, we're just seeing a, a real battle. And I think that Sergey is going to be, I mentioned this to you before, Judith, I think he's going to be a longtime challenger to Magnus. I don't think, given his personality, that he's going to back down after he loses, or if he loses, he still has his game to play. I think he's proven to everybody that he can fight with Magnus, and who wants to play against him in the match? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this guy has defensive is, skills yeah. for days. Why would you want to play him? I'd, I'd hate to have to play this guy. It's hard to beat him. Yeah. yeah. And what about this game now, Judith? We just had him move bishop e2. He was not going for knight d5. He just wants to play a serious game. Magnus, knight c5. Most likely he will be you know, Magnus, I've seen him and called a lot of his games. He has a tendency to play for a win when he needs a draw. I mean, it's incredible. We've seen it happen at the, the Singfield Cup, the first Singfield Cup that he won. If he had taken a draw and Aronian offered him a draw, if he had taken a draw, he wins the tournament clear. Instead of doing that, he's down a pawn in a position. He said, I think it's a good position for me. Let's play. And if he loses the game, it's a, a three-way tie, I believe it would have been. And he continued to play in a position where... He was like, take the draw and you win. So Magnus likes to be definitive. He's not the kind of guy that says, oh, a draw is all I need. I'm mm -hmm. going to play boring chess. I wouldn't be surprised if Magnus tries to win this game. Trust me, if he would get an all draw fair, I think today he will I've be seen soft. Him do it. I've seen him do it twice, actually. The but Singfield things, Cup was won. But things are not working for him so well maybe, here. Maybe not. Maybe not. But I think this would be the exception. This would be the exception, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so. But I, I'd be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Magnus declined a draw offer and he's actually playing for a win if he sees a good position. Castle, goes, go Bishop far away from D7. That. And this position is sharp, right? I mean, it, yeah, but it's for White, is generally speaking, it's not very dangerous for no, White. No, no, it can. Not. I mean, you have to make many, many inaccurate moves. 
Yeah, or this, even is the, this is the kind of position when Black gets a draw, he's happy. He walks away saying yeah. that Maroxi Bayern and all those weaknesses in the position. So I got the draw. I, I can't see how Sergey comes back from this. And again, he's in time pressure again, five minutes down on the clock. Ah, that's a routine. That's just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is it? it's called. It's like the Sergey Gambit. What are you doing? You know, giving up five, five, ten minutes. It's like why did you give twenty-five game? minutes to start with? It's too much. Might as well. Might as well have started what, with fifteen. What minutes. is Sergey's chance here then? Is it that Magnus yeah. will become overeager and wanting that yeah. win you're talking about? But could he do that at this position? This position doesn't look like the kind of position you blunder easily. Uh, there's just no weaknesses anywhere. Like, what? White's just going to bring his pieces out. White just played Rook B1. Yeah, Rook B1. But probably eventually Black's idea should be Knight E6. And I think one way or another, trying to get his bishop to B6, that would be the, the real goal for Black. But of course, because the D6 pawn is hanging under attack, it will be not so easy for sure. I mean, White wants to play easy B4. B4 is possible. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I, I think mean, that's uh, either immediately White would be playing in next move or just to keep it in mind. I mean, also, it's possible to play Rook D1, right? Rook D1, Bishop F1, Knight E2 maybe, and just start. But also Knight D3 sometimes Knight can D3, be just an just easy a, just exchange. A trade. It doesn't seem like White has any worries at all. And I think that for Black, if I were Black, I'd want to get an edge on the clock. That's what, that's what I'd want. Not just the unbalanced position, but get some other advantage. But taking the disadvantage on the clock too, that just seems that just seems like the, Do you the think wrong uh, way to play. Sergey believes that he can equalize the match? That's a good question. Well, if you came to try to win a world championship, you better have a lot of self belief. Uh, it can't. It, he must be shocked that he's made this hiccup, this misstep in game three, yeah. not game one where you have three more games. But game three, where you have but to do it in game it's four. It's interesting what he had in mind when he played knight g5 and went to this different structure. Did he, you think he, he wanted to play for a win, so now he shows it? Or he just, it was just a bad decision when he, after knight d4, instead mm -hmm. of exchanging the game pieces like he did in game, uh, yeah, what yeah. was it, 11? Mm -hmm. I, I think your last white, right? Yes, yeah. Last the, white yeah, just when he played knight g4. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's his last chance and he went for it. Why not? I think when, I, when he played in that last game, when he played knight, F, knight e4 and allowed f5, I think that was a mistake, uh, in my opinion. Knight h3, I don't know if you looked at that move. I felt like knight h3 was a better move in that moment, not allowing f5 because the c3 Yeah, move. f5 was kind of, uh, yeah. But f5 he could play after f5, c3 was possible. Right. But I, but I think if he had kept pieces on, he would have had a better chance. Here, now we a have a move. Here we go, b4. Rook. Rook f c8 was played, b4, I mean, it's a logical follow-up after rook b1. a takes b3, a takes b3, now b4 is immediately threatening, so black will have to go back with the queen or with the knight to defend against b4. That's the key word you use, defend. Yeah, but <laughs> that's, that's that defend. we have the defend world champion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got the black pieces and you're defending, pawns just came off, so now we only have six pawns on the board, only the queen side is... is becoming uh, less and less in number. I think and we know that in that case, it's not, it's not balanced, right? You want an imbalance. You want more imbalance. You want more pawns, not more trades. Yeah, now I think the best move probably should be queen b for the best move, but it doesn't necessarily give the best chance to able to win the, win the game. And Maurice, I was a bit surprised hearing uh, Karyakin's manager before the game. It almost felt like he had lost already. Do you think at all that could be Karyakin's mindset? I was surprised. Look, game three is a punch to the face. It's the worst game to lose. White to go After into you know, such a saving game. Not, you know, to go into game four with Black against Magnus Carlsen, needing to win. That's. You know, they probably came in and said, oh, yes, that defense after game two. Mm -hmm. Do him now in game three and let's take this home. The air is out the balloon. It's just very, very hard to get the mindset right with only a 10-minute break and have to play this next game. I, I think it's just, uh, it's almost like a fait accompli. It's just, this is just about done as far as uh, his manager is concerned. Now, Sergey, I think he's going to have other thoughts. He's like, I always have some kind of bullets in the gun, you know? Let's see what happens. But it, it's a bad situation, no question. How impressed were you with the way Magnus bounced back from game two? after getting that mental blow, not being able to capitalize on that winning position. I've never seen Magnus not convert so many times. It's so shocking. So the fact that he was able to sacrifice and play in this style, 
it was his best best game to me. It was very enterprising, very tricky, sacrificing pawns. That's not Magnus. And typical, anyway. We've seen in the match sacrifice a pawn for play and game this, eight. You, well, yes, oh, yeah. but I mean it's not typical Magnus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so to to see him play like that was really nice. And I think in rapid you see it more in Magnus. Magnus is more a free wheeler uh, in rapid than he is a positional squeezer. Uh, so in the meantime, yeah. uh, Queen D8 was played instead of Queen B4. Knight D3. Well, Magnus is just playing it very easily. And the computer is almost at 70, 30 Magnus Knight now. B4, right. black played very Bishop good. C6. Yeah. Come on. The problem is, is Black's right. position is so passive. Oh, it's and there will be no big hope. I mean, with this d5 square being weakness, rook a1 is possible to exchange any time he can go knight d5 practically. Junior, I mean, you're salivating. A beautiful. <laughs> you're salivating. This is like, it's so delicious for white. It's not even fun. This is like a picture perfect game for white. This is what you do when you play this formation, except you don't even expect to get this much. I mean, yeah. this is tremendous. Uh, now he's played h5. Rook d1, but he has to make moves like that. I mean, he has no other option. He has to go crazy and, and, and really do moves like can be unexpected. Has it's Magnus be. Carlsen. It's Magnus Carlsen. It's the wrong guy to play it against. H5, H5 is... But what, why? what would you play instead I, of H5? I, I, I would be crying. I mean. Sorry, I would not be... Yeah, but okay, crying is not an option. That's uh, the after. Yeah. That's no the after interest. game. There's crying. Uh, this one's bad. H5 does nothing. Uh, it's eight, going like to go said. h4, knight h5, knight f4, trying to copy Magnus what he did just the previous game. Bishop f8, queen g5. I mean, just go for it. Give all the pawns you have. I'm hearing you. you. Need. And you're Judy Polgar, so I don't want to disagree Here. too strongly. No, but... I mean, there's no other chance <laughs> to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it looks, looks terrible. Meantime, the guy's going to put a knight on d5 and start playing b4, b5. Or these kind of ideas coming. And uh, and also your D, your D6 pawn looks yummy. Oh, that doesn't matter already. Right? <laughs> it's gonna matter very soon. That that I mean that D6 pawn looks like. Well, I think that D5 like is the problem, lunch. of course. That... But was he a bit surprised by uh, H5? Is that why he's uh, at least doing some thinking now, Carlson? Well, it's a panic reaction. I mean, uh, you have to do something, trying to create something. I mean, Sergey knows it exactly that this is not the position he would like to be. Uh, playing actually for a draw even. <laughs> even for a draw. <laughs> I mean, even if he had this for a draw, you're right. Even if it was a tied match or he was he up wouldn't go and in you have this to play position, this for a draw, course. he'd be crying. I mean, this is just not a comfortable position. But I like his body language. He's just kind of yeah, drinking his coffee. Sitting back, yeah. I'm sipping, you know. <laughs> What's the big deal? I'm playing for the world championship. It's the last game. If I, if I draw, I lose. Let me get some water. Help the sponsors out. You know, help the, <laughs> maybe get a bottle of water contract. The Norwegian broadcaster is now saying we're only minutes away from Magnus getting the title. But it's interesting. Look uh, how relaxed Magnus is. Well, of course, to have plus one in such a position, well, With I understand. I mean, but this is, is kind of nice. This is the, one of those, you know, you take a picture of, you know. I, <laughs> you're like, okay, this is really nice. Take a look. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture. Okay, send that home. Uh, this one is juicy for white but now the question is what is he going to do with it i mean he just you know in blitz he just put the knight on d5 probably no well that's the most natural but probably black would be taking with the bishop and d5 eventually i don't know if you go with knight d5 or you go let's say cd5 i go knight f4 of course i will sacrifice a pawn and stuff like that it's not that it's good but you have to do it and make your draw is that what you're aiming for no no, no. You, i have to win i have play? to win for with black <laughs> Uh, that, that, that looks... But Maurice, we're, you were talking about that. crying in chess. Uh, we don't often see a lot of emotions in the player's room. And when Magnus won his last game, game three, he did like this in the player's room. We don't often see that. And that I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's what chess needs. I mean, outside, uh, people were cheering. People, you know, I don't know if you guys heard it, but there's yeah. a giant cheer. Everyone's happy to see a win. Uh, Magnus should show a lot of emotion. He, he played a big game. He sacrificed, yeah. and he won the game. He might have retained his title off that game. He should be cheering. I mean, che when I see we win, people win a chess, and then you kind of do a handshake and mm -hmm. do a little postmortem. It's like, dude, you just won a tournament. Act <laughs> like you won something. Yeah. You know, act like it matters. <laughs> I think we should have a lot more of that in chess. Well, We're a little too gentlemanly, I think. I mean, uh, when Magnus won, I'm sure he was like uh, outragingly so happy because. Actually, he won it pretty easily, to be honest. Yes. The previous game.
because somehow it was easy. He didn't have no struggle. I mean, he, he played a pretty smooth game. I Do mean, you think he realized that this is the moment? I don't think he was thinking this way uh, game three. He was just playing intuitively the game. I loved it. And, mm. uh, and it went all through. I mean, when he played E4, actually, it was beautiful. And I'm after telling that, you, it didn't look like Magnus. Actually, it looked like Judith Polgar. I mean, it really, <laughs> <laughs> it looked, you know, or Tal, or, you know, one of dynamic, sacrificial pawn players. Magnus is it's not his MO, but he can play like that. No, of course. That's, of course he can play like that. But it's just not the way he generally likes to win. He doesn't want to give you any chances. He wants to squeeze you to death. Actually, White played uh, Bishop F1 but, very solid. So he got H4. But uh, it wasn't, it, you know, this is the kind of stuff Magnus can do. We'd like to see a lot more of that come from him. Some sacrificing and, you know, enterprising enterprising play like that. I really like what Sergei is doing. He's tough. Goes h4, knight h5, knight f4, bishop g5. Go for it. Yeah, I've, I've seen you do things like that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe it at all. But does he have I mean, any other possibility? No, that's the only no he has no other chance. He yeah, has right. to do yeah, it. Yeah. But he didn't go knight h5. Look at that. He went knight d7, stopping any h2. kind of bishop b6 ideas. Uh, he's playing a lot more solidly, a lot more slowly. And basically, I think he does need to keep knights on. He needs to keep some. But I don't think uh, Magnus was right to go bishop f1 passive way. I think he just somehow should, he should just go knight d5. That's what I thought too. That's what I thought too. Put the knight on d5, and what's the guy going to do? This move, knight d7, keeping the game interesting, keeping it you know somewhat sharp. Well, I, Magnus's I like hand might be shaking after Magnus's some time. Magnus's hand is shaking. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Put that in the headlines. I don't. <laughs> think so. <laughs> I don't think so, but uh, it's true. You need to keep all the pieces on. Good news for, for Black. All the pieces are still on the board. Just a couple of pawns off the board. So the messier you can keep it for as long as you can. No, but I think H5, H4 really improved Black's position. Yes, I agree. And also, look at the clock. It was five minutes before. It's two minutes now. Magnus, slow down a little bit. You need to get that edge on the clock as soon as possible. If he can get some of that going and keep the position busy, don't trade anything off. I, I really like that knight d7 idea. Drop the bishop back to f8 and say to Magnus, you know, what are you doing? Although maybe you should have been more, act you could have been more active. But sometimes when you're active with knight h5, the trades, this way, no trades. Let's well, and probably busy. knight d7 was not the move which, which uh, Magnus uh, was expecting. So already it's a good start. If you go, he goes more to the... Uh, Positional idea with knight c5, possibly bishop g5, taking over d4 square. Mm. Yeah, it's starting to get interesting. And make Magnus to be nervous about it. I mean, practically, it's, it's only Magnus who can lose now. Yes, absolutely. In, you're right, the right attitude. I know, you know, in my career, whenever I was in a position where I was just losing, I always wanted to find a way to just relax completely. Like, I'm losing, so I'm not going to sit here and suffer because I might lose. So I'll just accept the fact that I'm losing and let's play some chess, you know, let's be relaxed and just play. And if Sergey can find that in himself now, he could just be like, you know, well, I'm losing anyway. Let's yeah. just make some moves and see what you yeah. got. And the pressure will be on Magnus and he'll feel that from Sergey as well. You'll feel that G3. at the board, that the guy's not desperate. He's just playing free chess. G3. G3, I'm not so sure about. G3. Uh, it certainly is a move. But, but talk, talking about being relaxed, could Magnus be too relaxed mentally in this position? No. Be, being sure that he's going to win this, everything is good, going fine, he's doing fine. He's maybe going. before, maybe the last couple of moves, like you said, Bishop F1, maybe a little not aggressive enough or being a little bit solid. I don't know. I, I, I can't say. I like Bishop but, H3. He wants but the bishop is getting to H3, yes. But the thing is, the position is a little bit looser, though, Judy. I mean, G3, it's not, not like your king is under any attack. I think that was his plan after knight H5 as well. And I, bit, yeah, and I think, yeah, well, knight D7, I go G3 anyway, Bishop H3. And put the bishop on H3. But what does it do? Bishop on H3. The problem for black is substantial plan. Uh, what do you do to make progress in this position? And Magnus played G3 right before he hit the 14-minute mark. That was very important. Right before he hit the 14-minute mark, when he would have joined Sergey, because uh, he's at 15 minutes now. Or maybe, maybe he actually played it when he was at 14.52 and got his, his extra mm -hmm. time. So now he's over 15 minutes, and now you look at Sergey's time tick down. He's spending a minute and almost a minute and a half so far in this position, and he needs to just make some waiting move that somehow makes progress or suggests progress 
what kind of move is that right here? You know you're worse with black. What to do to, to do anything? Well, this is, uh, yeah, actually, I like G3 for white, to be honest. Yeah, the more, the more I look at it, too, it's very control chess. It's, it's back to that yeah, again. Yeah, you don't come to F4 with your knight anymore. Bishop and what do you do? Bishop is always there. What's the plan? Is Bishop G5 any chance? No, the D6 pawn is hanging. Uh, knight C5 you mentioned earlier, Judith. What is happening there? Well, actually, Bishop G5 in general, I think it is not a bad move. Because after Bishop would take, take, Queen takes... But on the other hand, you well, don't what, necessarily want to exchange pieces. But what's the deal with your d6 pawn? You, you can't just, well, pawns doesn't you just matter want to give it up point. just like that? Well, after queen g5, if you just go rook d6, I'm actually queen e7 maybe. And your point is to put a knight on d4? Yeah. And is it that strong? Knight, is it uh, worth a pawn? Your knight is hanging on b4. You can't move oh, you away. Mean, oh, tactically even right yeah. now there's a problem. Yeah, that no, tactic sorry. is the problem. I wasn't, I wasn't looking at your board. Uh, yeah, so so then it's even playable, is it? Yeah, rook bishop g5 easy? is possible. No, but I don't understand. If I play rook... Uh, bishop rook g5, queen g5, rook d6, then queen e7 is and possible. And double rooks, you're going to play knight, knight d4. d4 at that point. And if I sack on d4... Well, no, no, yeah. No, other rook. Then takes a knight d5. And then you've got play rolling... Karyakin has now been thinking for over three minutes. So the g3 move obviously made him think. That's money in the bank. Yeah. You like making a move that makes the other guy think in rapid. Think about it. Three minutes of a 25-minute game, right? I oh, mean, that's yeah. like 12.5% of the time. When you start thinking five minutes, ten minutes, you only got so much time on the clock. You can't waste that much time on one move unless it's well, a Well, actually, Karyakin was doing it in every game. In every game. That's few, been his downfall. Few times. That's been his downfall, is giving that. I, he can't go under ten minutes. He just can't keep spotting Magnus all that time on the clock. And suddenly I mean, we have a five-minute difference here. Yeah, it's going to be a five-minute difference. I think that, you know, you just play a move. It's not that easy, I know, but... <laughs> it's easier said than <laughs> done. you got to make a move. You gotta well, knight c5 move. Is, is a completely reasonable move, I think. Knight dc5. Are there trades? As a, no, knight dc5 and bishop h3, like you mentioned? Well, Maximum Bluger was talking about making a move which is pleasant enough, just yes. make the move. Uh, yeah, but in this position, yeah. it's not so just to make it <laughs> no, pleasant No, I'm enough. just asking, is that the case here? It's not so easy to create things for black, to keep the play going without making a risky move or a blunder or has no consequences. So it is something uh, I understand why uh, uh, Sergei is thinking because probably g3 was not something he was expecting also one of the hardest things to do in chess when you're you're playing and you need to win is to not think about winning and just playing right mm. just making moves keep the game busy hope that somehow the guy makes a mistake and not overpress not do things that make your position loose uh, here we see this move rook to rook a3, a3. Yeah. it doesn't really threaten anything it 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 doesn't, I'm not so even actually sure. Actually, white can go maybe knight c2, rook moves back, and b4. Yeah, I'm not even sure what this move does, to be honest. Uh, this, is, this is just a move dropping down on the board. If he was going to play it, he should have played it in 10 seconds instead of spending all that time, and now he's at 9.30 on the clock. So one of the hardest things to do when you need a win is to not play for a win. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the same hand, thing with the draw. In other hand, you don't have to think about it. The, the win to put pressure on you, but still you cannot play normally because draw is not enough. <laughs> because draw is not enough. So you need to keep the pieces on the board. To me, it's all about keeping the pieces on the board and prolonging the game as long as possible. Try to keep your time pro management right and hope you get down to three or four minutes on the clock together when there's pieces still on the board. Because the other guy can't just trade off stuff. You know, that, that leads to disaster. You need a draw, you start trading off. Bishop That's usually H. a bad deal. And now we've seen this move Bishop H3, as you mentioned. Yeah, and Rook A8. And, and now he's doubled Rooks. We, we've seen that happen a lot, Judy. You need a draw, and you play for a draw, and you lose. Yeah. So, oh, that's very clear. So what you do when, you have, when you're in this situation is you just keep making moves, keep the pieces on the board. But he's doing it pretty well, Sergey. Well, the time, though, is the issue. The time is the issue. Will that... Yes, but if we, we look back the game, too, I mean, Karyakin was under a minute. 
that was, he was, that was 10 minutes behind on time. You did not want to play that position no, with Black No, you could have put all? a gun to my head and put a million dollars on the table and I said, I don't want this position. Yeah, I'm not okay. going to survive. I know what's going to happen. Exactly. So he, he was in a, such an unbelievable, difficult position that now actually he's a bit down on time, but actually the, it's a, it's a tough it's middle game. I agree. It's still rich. And there goes your knight C2 move, uh, chasing the rook. The rook's going to have to back up. And uh, the big story is going to be that move B4 eventually. All of White's pieces are looking very active, but except look, the knight. A, but it's a draw immediately, no? Oh, if not, no. Rook, but rook A6 rook and the knight, knight B4, four, yes, and he has, a, to go rook A5. he has to go rook A5. And keep it going. And actually, this is what we are having. He's going to go knight, but okay, knight C6, B4, and a uh, huge advantage. Now the computer feeling. says 50 50. Yeah, but 50 50 is not something Sergei is aiming for. No, <laughs> no not at all. Uh, he needs Magnus to to extend himself somehow. But again, the C2 knight was the only bad piece in White's position. Not bad, I mean, not, not useful. Now he can trade this off and play B4. All of his pieces will be good. That said, though, that third rank does open up a little bit, a little bit loose. Well, also knight D5, of course, it's something. Well, that's uh, been there for about 10 yeah, years. Yeah, but it's... I mean, it's uh, played a long time ago. <laughs> but maybe it's the time? Uh, knight D5 he's avoided. I mean, it's always a good time to play knight d5, I think. Yeah, it can be. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. No, no. Come on. He's, he's definitely got that. Again, that time situation. Magnus. He went back knight c2? No. He did play knight c2. Did he really? Knight c2. Gosh. That's a really interesting move. Why is that interesting, the, Maurice? The, the because cousin. actually, black is, can be in trouble. Probably he has to play b6. But what's the, the only point? move? Because B4, B5 is a threat. B4 wins. B4 traps the bishop. So B6, B6 is, looking, is the only move. Looking only. And which, you, which you, you usually don't want to make this right. move in this position. The B6 pawn becomes a target. And uh, the light squares weaken as well. So but on the other hand, there it's it is. also B6 tricky. Has been played. It's also tricky that Magnus is repeating moves as he would want to make a draw. So what do you think if they offer a draw to him? Would he expect, uh, accept it? First of all, there's no draw in his mind. <laughs> Not at all. He Not, was just no, making a night no beat. No draw in his mind. <laughs> but he was, but he was, Magnus. But what else could they, what else could he have done? So maybe, maybe he's put it. If he's playing for a draw, I mean, he can be in trouble. He could be in trouble. Yeah, I but mean, he he got, just got B six. But okay, he was just making. B six is on the move. You're right. If Rook A six, he could have played Knight B four and just win the match. Of course. So he's forcing some concessions from Sergey. Like we know you can't take a draw. Yeah, so, so he's playing cat and move. mouse. So he's playing cat and mouse. Absolutely. Sergey did play B6 though. He's decided he wants to be the cat, not the mouse. And <laughs> you know, let's let's see what happens now. Uh, the the light squares have been weakened after B6. Night night B4 seems like it could come right back in the position. Well, and it's going D5. to be the third time going there already. But let me ask you, Knight D4. Well, now that the pawn on B6 is weak. Or weakened? Is a knight d knight b4 knight d5 a big edge? Well, maybe not uh, so big because black will be taking a knight c5 or knight d4, maybe sacrificing something. But well, it looks on, really looks bad for really black. Bad. This this b6 I pawn mean, looks b6. like a victim. Well, though black can go running rook a2 possibly. Yeah, but how long is that going to last? Well, it's not very nice. I mean, to have your pawn on b6, this is the last thing you would this want to have. This is not what you want. I, I think that is what Magnus is looking at right now. Is spent a minute and a half looking at it. He knows the rook can go to a2, this point you made. So he's being careful. He doesn't want to give counterplay. Now that his second rank is fully opened, he does not want to have a rook land on there unless he knows he can handle it. Well, on the other hand, why don't you play b4? B4, black has to go rook a7 and then knight d5, let's say. Of course, a c2 knight I'm not very proud of, to be honest. Yes, absolutely. And that's a problem. That, that could be pinned on the second rank. It's the only bad piece, so-called bad piece, But in you the can't, position. no. But what do you do after knight d5? If you go rook a2, I go back knight c3. I don't want to draw. <laughs> Just a repetition. <laughs> Just a repetition. There you go. He's played rook to d2, anticipating any kind of second rank action. That's, that's a nice looking move. Rook d2. It's oh, yeah, that's a nice looking side. move. There's no way you get down to the second rank and do any damage after a move like that. And Magnus kind of leaning back in his chair there. He knows he's the one on the hunt. And Sergey is totally on the defensive with no plans for black. You, you can't show yeah, black a few moves. What do you do? 
Well, okay, Black has... Uh, Agnes has even left again, by the way. He's been doing that a lot. Yeah, he has. Like he did when he was 13 playing Kasparov in Reykjavik. Everybody remembers that moment, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> getting up on the board against Gary. <laughs> but uh, he's kept that habit. And Sergey would like to make a move right now that he got it from the board. Like, just, you get it from the board, boom! But... He doesn't have a move to play. He can't, can't find a quick one. And he's already spent 51 seconds after this very nice positional move. Rook to D2. I think that's a solid looking. That's a solid but looking. But is Magnus move. just playing so well, or could Sergey have been doing something differently here? No, no, no. The position sucks if you're black. Yeah. And that sucks. I'm overstating that. But if you're black, you don't Let's put it that way. Sergey wouldn't like to play in a classical game, any of the games. Yeah, <laughs> this no, kind of position. Not this position. It's, it's very unpleasant, actually, that he had to play b6. It really gives extra weakness in the position. If I actually took this position to Sergey before the match and I said, hey, Sergey, this is a position we've been analyzing with you for the black pieces, he'd say, you're fired. Like, bye. I'm, <laughs> what, we're not, I'm not playing this position. What are you doing? This is terrible. Can we get something else? Let's go back to the real Lopez's instead of this random uh, Sicilian, right? This is not what he wants. This is suffering, and he needs to move quickly. I think he has I to go back saying probably. that again and again, but he's got nothing to do. He just look at his pieces. He's got one, one piece over the, fourth, uh, the third rank. The rest of them are kind of huddled, similar for Magnus, of course, but Magnus's pawns are the ones that dominate the space, the typical Maroxybine kind of structure, and Black has nothing to do. He's just being stepped on. And he's going under seven minutes on the clock. Well, it will be very difficult for him to create some chances. I mean, this B6 is not really uh, I would be too happy with. But eventually, White will be playing Knight D5. He'll we keep saying that move. <laughs> but, right. but he will not be able to avoid that, I think. He's going he's to play knight d5 when it's winning. <laughs> like, knight d5, okay, you can resign. <laughs> I've already built up everything I can build. The, one of the problems when you lack space, as you see here, for black, is there are a limited number of options. There's just a limited number of moves to play. So you can look around and say, I have no space. What do I do constructively? I mean, you mentioned sacrificing the D pawn somehow. I think you probably are less likely to sacrifice that D pawn. Well, in anymore? This no, after B6, after it's B6, almost impossible. Exactly, because well, of maybe, that bishop hanging. Maybe Black will be playing Queen C7 in with the idea to play Bishop G5, exchanging uh, the bishops. That's, that's somewhat reasonable. Karyakin is under six minutes. That's all you got to know. Just that clock ticking down inexorably. He and I'm pretty sure trouble. Sergei will go down under two again. Oh, man. But you know what? <laughs> well, the, the last time you got a draw out of it, it's not going to help you win the game. That is what he's after now, what he needs. And I don't know what he's looking at. It, it must be deep because he's spending all his time on it. And there doesn't seem to be anything constructive except your plan of Bishop G5, which doesn't look like it works at all. So why is he stopping to think right now? I mean, it just seems it's hard, I know, but you need a move. You just need to be practical. Even if it's a suboptimal move, play a move. It's worth the time on the clock to save. Let Magnus stop and look at it. And now he's been like, thinking for four minutes, going like under five. Why not bishop f8 and just keep the game going? I, I mean, the bishop's not good on f8, but is, is, is playing bishop f8, is playing bishop f8 if it's a bad move or a suboptimal move better than spending three or four minutes yeah, of but your he time thinks, remaining? Yeah, but he thinks that he can go down after two minutes and then to play fast. Oh, come on. Come to on, play you can't fast, do that. You, you can't do, do that. It later. The guy's got and ten minutes on his clock. Yeah. You need to move. Just move. Magnus Carlsen is now over double the time of Sergei Karyakin going down towards four and a half minutes. Just a bad is game. this some of the last thinking of the challenger this match? Well, you're still game to play. Don't start thinking the game is over until it is over. But it may be his last chance, his last gasp right now. But I don't think he's going to trick Magnus with the next move. Do you think he could possibly play a move that Magnus is going to just fall off his chair and spend seven minutes on? I don't think that's going to happen in this position. Yeah, not in his next not, move. Not in this position. Five minutes Whatever the next thinking, move is, we don't see four anything. Four minutes on the clock. So that means he just needs to make a move. It could be a purely defensive move. Even if it's king h... No, not king h8, but I mean, <laughs> make, make a, just make a move. Don't just sit there. You're frozen like a statue, three. and you're under four minutes already. Come on. He spent already more than five minutes on this move. What kind of move could it be, to be honest? Well, like, bishop f8, queen c7, queen b8... 
Queen F8. And Magnus Carlsen thinking. looking comfortable in the chair. The only, could, could he be thinking, I get Magnus in a situation where he's, where he's so ahead on the clock that he's so confident that he thinks he should win the game and doesn't play for any kind of draw and goes all out. In the meantime, I'll defend, 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 and hope he blunders a big advantage. That doesn't seem like the rational. I, I don't see that as... Yeah, but in this situation, I think you can't think rational. That I would mean, be the most already... brilliant plan of all time if it worked. <laughs> That'd be incredible. This is worse than rope -a dope I mean, Six come on. minutes of thinking now and going under three minutes on the clock for Sergei Karyakin. If he offered Magnus a draw right here, do you think Magnus takes it? Yes. I don't think so. Yes. You have to explain that. Really? We should ask him yep. if he's going to be the winner. You have to explain your opinion there, Maurice. Why do you think that? Queen C7 because plays. Magnus has a gorgeous position. Look at the computer. He's going nuts, 77%. And I don't think Magnus thinks he can lose this one. You know... There's, there's some situations where you just feel like, I'm just going to step on you. now. But, but not exactly but when with, your crown was already halfway in your opponent's hand. But with the time, Maurice, he, he will be the champion. Why won't he? Because he just wants to know. show, We're, I'm you know, the best, I'm the pure, boss. Pure speculation <laughs> right now. Magnus does just not like to win like that. He likes to win by winning. And I... Well, I don't think after game eight it would have been the case. <laughs> yeah, but we're not in game eight now. We're up one with the white pieces with an advantage on the board, on the clock. Sergei it's Karyakin. almost like championship, a champion's uh, challenge, you know? It's like you're the champion and I just gave you all these advantages and you're going to grovel with a draw? Okay, yes, you could. Of course, it's your right. <laughs> it's, your, it's your birthright to do that as a champion. But Well, I think uh, uh, Magnus was doing uh, quite some occasions in this World Championship things which we were, we were not expecting him to do so. And Sergei Karyakin ghosts, is now going under two minutes those on the clock. Those are gone. Right we now, have, it's all Magnus. And we have 74% Magnus Carlsen on the computer. And we have the clock ticking for Sergei Karyakin under 150, and he makes his move. Rook B D one and finally your move, Bishop F eight. Oh my goodness! Instantly now. Gee, he spent all that time. But he's under two minutes. He's under two minutes. Yeah. No, this is. I'm curious whether Magnus will be taking one day G H four. Of course, it's uh, uh, Sergey is inviting him to do so. So knight F four and some. That's a, yeah. That's a meaningless pawn. I don't think he's gonna even bother with it. The question is, how does he make progress? Does he play knight b4 or knight d5? Finally, make Or knight d5 immediately, or b4, b5 and there's, stuff. There's so many ways to try to make progress here. And he's been thinking already for, it looks like, about 38 seconds. And it's, a, I mean, he, he's got a strange face there. Like, is he exasperated? Is it, what's going on? I mean, the guy should be trying to win the game. He shouldn't be, shouldn't be sighing in a moment like this. But he was like, sighing after becoming the world champion in Chennai 2013 because he ended with he a He took a GH4. He took an age. Well, you said it that he's playing for a win. So, of course, if you play for a win, you go like, I can do anything I want, it seems. Wow. Well, neither four, I guess. No? Wow, that's definitely a serious decision to make. Uh, I think if Sergey had... 10 minutes on the clock, I would be a little bit more worried for Magnus about the chances. But with a minute and a half, I, I just, I don't buy it. I don't think you can play genius attacking moves in this position just right off your fingertips. And he hasn't shown it in the match so far, and I don't think he's going to show it suddenly now. But I don't think actually Sergei was paying attention on Sergei that point. It's like nine. your reaction that, ah. He will not take on H4. But 122 yes, on well, that's Magnus what you Carlson expect. answering. So Magnus has traded on F4 and given up his dark squared bishop. Exchange. But uh, now the D4 square is free for a knight. So you might see a move like knight D4 appear yeah, on the board. Yeah, but black wants to go swing his rook to H5 possibly. Or just go knight D5. At least he has a beautiful knight. He's 
missing a phone and some things are really going wrong, but he has this beautiful knight on e5. And the position is imbalanced. The dark square bishop for black, if it ever gets in the game, will no, be something he grabbed, special. He grabbed the other but, knight. But uh, yeah, that knight seven. is dead. It's gone. Now we have two Queen knights seven. versus two bishops. And of course, there's moves. Knight d5 is still in the position. Knight d4. Will Magnus take on knight b6? Knight d5 is in the position. Uh, Do you B6 think he will take b6? B6 Can is pure Can black go d5? Greed. B6 is pure greed. I don't think he wants that one. That one I doubt. D5, B4. Yeah, no reason to give any counterplay in this position. But tell me, Judah, what's wrong with putting your knight on D5 now? Well, probably some knight A2. Can, uh, well, probably black takes it first. No, not... I'm sorry. I really meant knight B4, knight D5. Something like this. Well, this doesn't D5 uh, a way of trying to... So the tricks, very good point to make. The tricks are coming because of that dark squared bishop yeah, on mean, the long if, diagonal. If once black can get his bishop out to c5, no matter how many pawns down I have, it's going to be scary for white. It, it'll be slightly problematic, that is for sure. Maybe it's not good, but it's scary. Yeah, it, it, looks, it looks like that is a dangerous idea. So knight d5 shuts down all hope, yeah. from what I can tell. Yeah, at least uh, it's, it's not so easy. But in other hand, black can take... On d5. And uh, rook takes is going to Rook takes d5. Maybe what about rook a2? Actually, black can maybe even just take it. Black has a great rook. I go queen h3. I never stand uh, so good <laughs> in this game. Right, and then hope your bishop somehow gets on some diagonal Well, some there way. is still some, some dreams Judith, The move to... knight to b4 has been played, ignoring knight the b4. idea of d5 in this position. What is the trick? What is the tactic? Well, is it d5, knight, c6? Knight, c6, six, queen, c6, and then take on yeah. d5 with a pawn with tempo? Yeah, it's, it's already And then knight e4, down. and you're down to, or even d6 to follow. Yeah, so that is, yeah, that just is... shut that down. Knight, and Karyakin well, getting close to one minute on his clock. Well, if he could do that, the game is busted. The game is done. That is a killer blow. The knight is coming back. Something's going to land on d5. and you got 58 seconds. He's about to lose. Oh, 55, 52. Challenger Sergei Kayakin has now 49 seconds on the clock. I think even if he had 49 minutes on the clock, <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> this is like problems. You're, you're down a pawn, yeah, but your pieces are being dominated. And a knight's going to land on d5. You're not going to have any play. Could a bishop on e5 in some kind of dream world happen? I think he, he will just Karyakin go for d5. And struggling with 22 seconds on the clock for Sergei Karyakin now. And he no, makes he the move. He went rook a3. Rook a3. Go enough. solid kind of thing. Threatening the pawn and, and on... And what about queen b6? Queen b6 looks like a pawn. Well, okay, black can go rook b3 and kind of equalize maybe the game. <laughs> I don't know, queen c6, queen a7 check possibly. Also, well, queen c6, I don't think he could ever win this kind of game. Takes rook c3, knight d4 on the safe side. But of course, this is not what Magnus wants. He no, doesn't want Magnus to Magnus wants to find a winning advantage here. It's not as big as it was. And this one is a Actually, little bit of counterplay. some tactics. Maybe takes, takes, and knight b5. Showing the point, of course, that rook takes that b3. That after rook b3, knight, knight b4. b4. Very nice point, in fact. And if black has to move away, then just play uh, knight d4 or possibly rook d5 later. I don't think we're black seeing your analysis here on the board there. But that does look like an interesting idea. So the challenge here, of course, for Magnus is how does he press home this advantage or just make the draw? Just make the draw. I am sure all of Norway and, and all of his team is I, I, saying, just Magnus, take the draw. Magnus, well, it's no concrete make, draw. Make a draw somehow. But it's, Please make yeah. a draw. But <laughs> Magnus goes his own way. That's why he's the king. And he's no doubt looking for a way to prove that he still has an advantage here. Yeah, probably he has a temptation that he wants to win this game. We know that. I'm well, telling you, he didn't walk into this, this game looking well, for a this, this was the first moment when I think that he has this idea that yeah. if we got already this far, 
then maybe it would be a nicer end if, if it's not only a draw, but a win. But I'm not sure he, was, he will be. I think be. he wanted a win from the get-go, but he knew he had a draw in his pocket. And, and so you don't become the champion playing for a draw. You play for the win. You play the, at least play the position. And if the draw happens to come to you, it comes to you. You haven't seen him making any repetitions or trying to repeat in any way? No, but he had some games like Game 7 where he came for a draw. Yes, wow. Which was very unexpected to me. Well, Game 12. What about Game 12? looked pretty shaky, in fact. Uh, he decided that the Rapids were a better way to go. So far, he's been proven right. He's clearly the better Rapid player. He's used his time much better than Sergey has every single time. And he could have won this match already, frankly. But what but, about his time now? Uh, but his, thinking his, for three minutes and it's getting down to five minutes. His time is ticking down, yeah. indeed. That is definitely the case. And I, I'd, I'd be a little worried again if I were in Magnus's camp. Like, <laughs> you need to make a move. <laughs> no, he a still move. has plenty of time to go down with. It's like plenty another three of, minutes. Plenty of time, but you're under that five minute in blitz mode. You went from rapid to blitz. But is, he, is he thinking now, should I go for a win or should I go for a draw? Is that... What's impossible to say? No, I, I think, think he's, he's looking thinking for the best was move. the best move. Exactly. He's looking for the best move. He's definitely yeah. trying to figure out what is the clearest line here. Well, rook b2 is an is interesting way, but it's, it's not something you want to do to defend the b3 pawn. No, of course not. Of course not. But I think he will go knight c6 and knight b5. It's four and a half minute on the clock. That's a very long think he's putting in into this moment. This is the critical moment of the game. This is it. Uh, mm. He's had an advantage throughout, but now a little bit of technical problems with this move. Rook to a3, b pawn under attack. Uh, you see him there grabbing a, a pawn, I think, putting, grabbing a piece, something to have in his hands. He's about to make some kind of decision, and he, his body flinched, and he's now taking on, on c6, simplifying there. And you would expect him to play instantly after such a long think. But he has not played right away, Judy. That's surprising. But he will. That he, he will spent so B5. long to take on C6. And then, and now he's played the move Knight B5. As you said, this variation. And look at this. Rook takes on B3. Well, and after is, Knight yeah, to B4, Queen, Queen C4. C4, a sacrifice of an exchange to go into an interesting position. This... This doesn't look winning, easily anyway. The Rooks, he's up in exchange. It's interesting that this is what Sergei uh, thought the best chance for him. Sergei had 20 seconds on his clock. The best chance was to survive and make some moves. I mean, he needed to move. No, but he was thinking about this. But he I'm was thinking sure about he, this line. He, he saw, saw this line yeah. and decided this is the way he was going to go. Yeah. I don't see how he wins this position as black. But look at that white king. There are some issues over there. Well, with a lot of help from Magnus, it can be the case. I mean, Queen E2. Queen E2? I mean, why can't we play Queen rook E6? A3. Why not Rook A3? And Karyakin's clock rook is ticking King towards two, half no? a minute again, and he makes his move. And then Queen E6. Yeah, I think that, I think that airy-looking king side is where the, point, the, the action's going to be at. That white king Bishop E7. is a little problematic and on balance position. Surprising to see Magnus choose... This position as the one he spent all that time thinking about. And I'd have to say, I'd be just a little uncomfortable. The advantage was so crystal clear, and now it's not crystal clear anymore. He's definitely not worse, I think, but it's just not that same. No, white is uh, clearly better, but probably you, you will not win it. It's not juicy anymore. Before it was juicy. It's before going towards was, before it was sexy. three minutes we were, and 30 seconds. We were relaxed, seconds we were going to win, Carlson. it was going to be no problem. Now it's like... Wait a minute, this guy actually thinks he might win the game. But he's not happy, Magnus, to have winning positions. It's much better to not to have it so winning. I'm sorry, this is a, a little delicate. King to G2. King went Daring, to bishop takes H4. That will not happen. He will not give away his D6 No, D6 pawn. is not going that's to just be not gonna, away. That's just not going to be the case. I think, I think queen the, E6. the black queen will have to hightail it back to the E6 square and just try Kariakin. to harass him somehow. Karyakin again, under 30 seconds. 25. Well, it's hard to believe that Sergey can win it. Is there any scenario which can go that White is losing? Actually, White is losing the only 15 option. 15 seconds for Sergey Karyakin. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know what he's thinking nine, about now, but Queen eight, E6 looks like a good seven, time to make a move six. already. And we said that move very early on. Why did it take him so long to play? I have no idea. Maybe he had other thoughts on his mind. And he's at 14 H5. seconds. 
Magnus now Good shifting move. that pawn. Good move. Rook right, because he can play rook d5 rook and d5, you'll never see that pawn again. And now rook down to a3, gaining well, a little bit more D3. time on his clock. He'll be playing rook d3 simply, I think. A rook d3, I just moved the rook back, no? Or maybe, hmm. There's no place to put the rook. You're going to have to end up on a7 or a8 or something like this. Right now, I think for Sergei, it's about prolonging the game. Something like rook a8, if you can just well, dance white, around a little bit. White will some be going time. rook d5, then... Then what? Then I go rook c1, control the c file, or possibly go e5 eventually. Now, Sergei has to play quickly. He will get 10 seconds every move. Magnus has spent 30 seconds on this last move. He's now under three minutes. This is the mess that Sergei wanted. He wants to see Magnus get back down, maybe under two minutes. Mm. Join him in time pressure. Make it a little chaotic. He'd wish there were a lot more pieces on the board, but this is the hand that he's been dealt. Okay, and now he's played right away. two right away, gaining some time on the clock. The rook goes back. There he goes, rook a3. You can be sure he's not going to play rook a2 again. He's probably going to play a move like rook to a8. I don't know why he's stopping to think about it right now. Now, it's just obvious he has to move his rook backwards and not repeat the position. Not let his time tick down. He's letting it tick down again, and there it yeah, is. He okay, just has seven. to do it, and he's done it. Mm. And now it's a question for Magnus. How fast is he going to play? And he's put his rook on d5. Rook d5, is, it's clear cut. Still, Sergey with a little bit more time to breathe. Seconds. What is a waste move here? Rook 25 seconds. b7 maybe? Rook to c? I think white will be going e5 eventually. Actually, queen d2 is an option to attack the f4 pawn. And there goes rook to c7. If you can play e5 right now. And the percentage well, is 73 is Carlson, 27 Karyakin. Sorry? Queen d2. Well, he's got plenty of good moves here that could easily draw this position. There's no doubt that white is winning or much better. At least better. Well, it should be kind of winning. It Queen should be D2. kind of winning now. Those last couple of moves really have cemented the position. And 27 seconds left. How does he keep this interesting? He wishes he could pick his bishop up and put it on the e5 square. Karyakin under 20 again. not going to happen. It's hard to see a move for him, Judith, even just to keep the game going. 15 well, seconds probably to make a move. Six or something. Which after Can Karyakin do it again? 10 seconds. E5 is Eight possible. 8 seconds. 7. Got to make six. a move. Queen f6. Queen of six. So rook f5. And how quickly will the move come out? Rook f5, queen ah. h4. Seems strange as queen is over there. Isn't queen f2 trading queens? Well, rook f4, no? Is any trick Oh, and, over and here? Uh, a free pawn, maybe? He just wants to take the h5 pawn. If queen. Actually, here, maybe queen rook c1. Of course, rook allows c1 move is, rook to c2. Rook c1 is also unpleasant for black here. Trading off rooks. Yeah. Agreed. And that's what he played. Great move, and now that yeah, queen after is this, it's entombed. Over. That queen is entombed on Back h4 to 15 with again. no future opportunities to make any kind of noise. I don't see what Back he can do. to 10 move. seconds. Uh, can he save his rook? Can he move his rook away, or Six, does he have to trade? Five. Oh, he makes the move at five yeah, seconds you again. You don't want to. You don't want to trade, but, yeah, but you White get is e5. owning the board now. It's 80-20 on the computer. Oh, just simply e5, no. Or looks check like. and after that e5 yeah that king mm, it's looks icon. terrible white owns the space he's got the file what can he hope for here magnus with enough time on the clock at 222 sergey with only 14 yeah because seconds. actually black has no chance at all i mean no attacks no idea zero he's queen on h4 but he has no checks no attack nothing no move but it's a moment it's a critical moment for magnus he must figure out what to do. He, There's a hesitation. His hand went over the Magnus piece, under two minutes And now. then he backed up. And as very good point about the under two minute situation, this is a dangerous moment. He's, he wants to win, but then he wants to draw, but then he wants to win. <laughs> but then what do I do? And he's taking the pawn on F4. Wow. Allowing, 12 seconds allowing for a check 10 seconds on for A2. Karyakin, eight, he's allowed this check on A2. Seven, what is he thinking six, about? Five and again. He finally played it, and mm. Magnus has calculated that there is no he's danger. H1. Even Queen F2 is not working here because of simply Queen G3. Queen G3 shuts everything down. This is what Magnus. Wow, has what a beautiful mate. Rook C8, King H7, Queen H6. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Did he miss that? 
He, you mean right now he can play? Wow. Right he now. Can go rook C8. Go rook C8, bishop F8. But then rook F8. And then you just, just demolish it? Takes. Uh, Is it mate? Doesn't he run out to the And he sees square? it. And he sees it. And it's 16. He sees it. Whoa! Oh. What a way to finish off a world championship. Amazing combination he by Magnus. He couldn't that capitalize. Scintillating. He couldn't wow. capitalize Simply on winning on three winning. occasions during the match. But Magnus Carlsen bounced back. And after wow. winning the third and the fourth game of the tiebreak, the Norwegian birthday boy is still the chess world championship wow. here in New York. Ah. We waited all that time oh, to see beautiful. something like this. <laughs> this one will go down in the history books, a way to win a world championship, one of those games that you will put up on your wall. This is a combination, a great one by the champion to finish it off. We won't care about what he did in the rest of the match. <laughs> we'll remember this finish for sure. Wow. Queen, queen to H6. That is picture perfect. Any way you take that queen, it's made either on F7 I or H8. I see it on his hand when he played rook C8. 